Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of our course vlogs. We are out here at Rancho Park Golf Course. This is the LA, the city of Los Angeles' gem of a public course. So many rounds out here are played every year and I'm gonna be one of them today. Make sure you smash that like button down below if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to see you back here week after week. Let's head out there, that first hole. Little part four. Here at Rancho Park, this is easily my favorite municipal golf course in the area. It's going to test all parts of your game with some good elevation around the golf course and some very small targeted greens. This old school golf course is going to start here with an elevated fairway, so you're going to have a little bit more distance than you see there on the card at 387. That bunker down the right will protect the fairway, and hopefully you can get something up to the top of the plateau and you're able to see the surface of the green. These bunkers left and right uh, do have big severe mounds that come into the green and are, and are affecting the slopes on the green. Today we're facing a back hole location here on the first hole, and I'm teeing off right at dawn. No warm up today, this is straight off the parking lot, and that was a really stiff driver swing there. Luckily, I missed the fairway bunker, and I uh, just had to chip down a six iron here, hoping to skirt something all the way up to the green, but with the amount of water that was down on the ground, that wasn't gonna happen. It was just right here on the front edge, and just had to bump up a little sand wedge, hoping to get it up there nice and close, and thank God the greens were rolling as they normally do here at Rancho Park, and I was able to get that ball rolling down there nice and comfy to a nice comfy tap in par. Now here, number two is gonna test you right away. This is easily the toughest golf hole on the golf course. A long 470 yard par four is gonna be playing up the hill all the way to the green. Adjusted for the hill, I'd say that this is close to 500 yards from those tip black tee box. You're looking for your tee shot to land over that little river crossing and up here on the side of the hill as the entire fairway slopes from the upper right down to the lower left hand side. Now coming into the green, it's really tight with all these tall, very overgrown trees. And today, luckily, we're facing somewhat of an accessible middle hole location. But first things first, you really gotta lace this drive and get it in play. Well, after the first one that I barely hit at all, this one was perfect. A little cut right down the middle, and I left myself a comfortable 193 into the flag. It's a long way up there, though. Had to adjust a little bit for the hill and for the cold, and I took my 200 club here, that's my six iron, and this club barely flew to the front of the green. I needed another 10 or 15 yards out of that one to get it up there. And this is a long, long birdie putt. Just trying to get something close and a nice comfy tap in par. It was kind of close and uh, just had to roll in a little snaky four footer here to roll in that par and we're on to the first par three of the day. Playing 200 yards to the center from the black tees. This is going to be playing a little bit down the hill as the first two holes are playing up that hill. And to a front flag here, this is adjusted down to 182 yards. That's a nice comfy seven iron for me, and unfortunately I tugged this one big time, and when you miss left on this hole, you miss low. Down below the surface of the green, I could just barely see the surface here. Just trying to chip this one up, nice and close for another comfy tap in par. Oh my lord! Even though that wasn't on camera, that ball almost went in the hole. You can see here, it's close enough. I can just tap it in with the wedge. That's two out of three holes. I've had a nice tap in par with the wedge. I'll take that all day long. Now here, the first par five of the day is the easiest hole on the front nine, according to the rating here. 522 yards playing back down the hill. This uh, landing area here is a little bit tighter than you'd think it would be uh, because of the downhill and because of that area on the left-hand side where you see the trees, it's just a no-fly zone, can't be hidden from over there. Once we cross this little cement riverbed, are we coming into the green? It's just a little bit elevated, I guess, from the, from the fairway, not really anything you need to take into account. 
And uh, that fence there is protecting the first fairway. You don't want to go too long and have to deal with that weird obstruction. Now, almost everywhere around this golf course, you can hit a nice, comfortable fade for a right-hand golfer at least and find the middle of the fairway nearly every single time. Now here, a five iron should have been plenty of distance to get it to this flag, but I pushed this off to the right and I was flirting with that fence that I just uh, so happened to mention as during the flyover, I took my drop around the fence as I was playing right up against it and uh, just didn't hit a good chip shot at all. Nope, not at all. So now I got to get up and down for par and uh, hopefully this will be a good chip shot. There we go. Hey. Another one where I don't even need the putter. That's three out of four holes that I can just tap it on in for par with the wedge. Uh, like I said, I will take that all day long. Now, this is some of my favorite part of the golf course here. The fifth hole is a beauty. Playing way up the hill off the tee box. It's a blind fairway up there. You can't see anything. You, you can barely see that bunker way off in the distance, and that's your target. This is a Big, big dog leg to the right, a lot sharper dog leg than I do remember when I was up there playing it. Uh, coming into this green, it's a beautiful one here, uh, surrounded by a little bit of a bunker uh, left and right. And to be honest with you, you just really got to be precise on this approach shot. This is a treacherous, treacherous green. Well, that's another big power fade off the tee there. I was really comfortable with that tee shot. Left myself in the middle of the fairway here, a nice smooth pitching wedge. Just trying to put this one in the middle of the green as the flag was tucked on the left hand side and I did not want to miss the green. I'd just rather take my two putt and head on down to the next one and well, that's probably what we're gonna see here. Yeah, when your speed is on, your speed is on. Another comfy tap in par, and we're on to the par for sixth hole. Another hole with lots of terrain movement here. It's going to be down off the tee and kind of back up into the green. If you can hit your tee shot far enough, though, you can get it up on top of the flat and have a nice short approach shot into this relatively tame green. Now I do say relatively, because that's except for the front, as I found, as this front green was in a really treacherous location, especially if you were long of the hole. Now that might be a little bit of foreshadowing for what we're about to see, but first things first, let's take the driver and play another big cut into the fairway. Now, unfortunately, I started this one right down Main Street, so it cut right out of the fairway into the right-hand rough. Luckily, though, I was under 100 yards and up on top of that plateau I talked about, so a relatively easy approach shot here. I took my 120 club and just tried to kind of chip it down there, and I was above the hole, and this was a really, really slippery putt here for birdie. Man, oh man, the story of the day are these comfy tap-in pars, and I will take them over and over and over again. Now, this beautiful seventh hole is heading back down the hill that we just played up on the sixth, and it's kind of a different type of a par four than we've been seeing here. Here you can see that it's kind of a layup par four. There's lots of bunkers protecting this 150-yard area here into the green, and if you go beyond those bunkers, it's going to be dropping down significantly down the hill, down to the green where it's sitting down there at the bottom. And, uh, you know, if you take a driver and you get it well, sometimes you can get it down the hill where you just have to get up and down. So let's give it a go. I played for that cut once again, but it didn't really cut this time. It stayed down the left-hand side and... It, it kind of hung up here on the wet grass up on top of the hill. Was not really the, the play I should have uh, should have had off the tee. I probably should have taken a five iron and put it in the middle of the fairway. But all in all, I was able to get the ball pin high. I was uh, up here on the fringe dealing with another ridiculously severe slope on the back of this green. 
just trying to lag another one down there for a comfy par, and that was another mission accomplished. All right, here the beautiful par three eighth hole. Oh man, this one is a stunner. Now, even though it's playing 215 yards from the tips, luckily it plays about 10 yards down the hill and I can compensate for that. So I'm gonna take my five iron, which is typically my 210 yard club, hoping to get this up over the false front. That is pretty severe protecting the front of this green. Now that was another mission accomplished here as the ball didn't roll back. It stayed up on the fringe for me and I was able to take a putter at it and hopefully lag another one on down here for something nice and comfy. That looks comfy. And hey, that's an all around good putt for another par. That's eight pars in a row to start this day. And we're on to the last one here on the front nine. A 400 yard par four is gonna be playing back down the hill towards the driving range here and back down towards the clubhouse. A big slinger of a dog leg to the left this time is gonna be a significantly different shot than we've been seeing for the last two hours here. Now off the tee, a driver might be too much because into the green, you really need to have your number correct. This is a front flag bringing that bunker squarely into play. Now, of course, I thought I could turn the driver over to the left, even though I've been hitting a perfectly good cut all day long. So, well, there it went. It cut over here into the 10th fairway. And uh, I mean, if you're gonna miss, miss big, right? Because when you miss big, then you have a chance to recover. A big lofted nine iron here over the trees got me down somewhere near the green. And I mean, I have a chance to get up and down here for par and keep the par streak alive. And no, that one came on down here to the fringe. And oh, now I'm going to have to roll in this 20 footer to keep those pars alive. Oh, I didn't even get it there. I didn't even get it there. And the first bogey of the day. Hey, thank you everyone for joining us today. Don't forget to smash the like button down below. You could subscribe as well if you like this video. We'd love to see you back. See you again next week. Later.